thinking about you in the morning when I wake up. Good morning text, but we still laying lay up. I'm thinking about you in the night, or you stay up. With a nigga on the phone just to make up. I'm thinking about you in the evening when I make lunch. Peanut butter jelly, wretched when I fill my belly. I'm thinking about you, I'm conflicted with my player ways. Don't catch no feelings for me, baby, cause I'm player made. What's good? I'm the antidote. I'm not an MC. I'm a medical master of ceremonies. First piece of merchandise that I'm going to talk about is my ATG against the Grand Crew Neck Sweater. ATG is an independent record label that I've started or am trying to start. And pretty much it's just a symbol of being yourself, not really caring what other people think about you. Because I myself, I think of myself as a rebel. I don't really like going with the rules or people telling me what to do. So I came up with Against the Grain and I made it into a record label. And I want other people to be motivated by it, to just do your own thing. You don't got to fit in. People don't have to like you. If you're weird, you're weird. If you're corny, you're corny. Just go against the grain. Second piece of merchandise is my antidote the logo shirt that I got. And I'm not a MC. I'm the medical master of ceremonies because I'm the antidote. So I got the name the antidote by a classmate. We was in class one day, and I was talking to him. And I wanted to drop a mixtape called The Anecdote. And I still didn't have a rap name yet. So he was like, why don't you call yourself the antidote? But then I came to terms with liking the antidote myself because I do see myself as a cure and I have like a healing aura towards people. So growing up, I've been around hip hop all my life. My mom was pretty much the first person that introduced me to hip hop. She introduced me to rappers such as Domino, Ski Low, rappers that most teenagers or people my age wouldn't know about. She also introduced me to good R&B music. People such as Mary Jane Girls, The Whispers, Marvin Gaye. My brother, he also had an influence on my music. He introduced me to like Dipset, you know, Jada Kiss, that era of music. And then my sister, she also had an influence on my, you know, choice of music or my rapping as well. She introduced me to like 3-6 Mafia, Pimp C, and also R&B music such as Donnell Jones and people of that nation. All right, so I pretty much started rapping through poetry. Um, I wrote poems before I actually wrote rhymes. So I would write my poems, and then I started putting those poems on beats. So growing up, we didn't have no instrumentals, no pretty much laptop, Wi-Fi, none of that. So my, my brother, he had a stereo or a little system, and he would just play an instrumental to a beat, and I would rap over it, freestyle over it in the kitchen. And everybody was like, oh man, she's, she can rhyme, this and that. So that's pretty much how I started rapping. So the first pro project that I put out was called the Unplanned EP. I put the Unplanned EP out when I was like in ninth grade in high school. So the Unplanned EP is exactly what the name says. It was an Unplanned EP that I had put out pretty much remixes on top of songs. So then the second EP that I put out was called uh, Third Base. Now Third, Third Base was a different type of project. Third Base was actually three diss songs that I had dropped to certain people when I was in a certain time period of my life while I was being petty. Next project that I put out was called the Finesse Tape. Finesse Tape again is pretty much just remixes. It was remixes of songs that I liked or that I was introduced to growing up, such as I did Dipset Anthem, I did a Jada Kiss instrumental, you know, pretty much all the music that has influenced me. And then I dropped the Finesse Tape 2. The Finesse Tape 2, it was more so old school music. I did a remix to Lauren Hill and then I did a remix to Lil Kim. So then after Finesse Tape and Finesse Tape 2, I stopped dropping those type of EPs and mixtapes because I want to get away from like remixing everybody's music. So I stepped away from that and I started dropping dope mixes. My name is The Antidote, so I took the last part, dope, and made it mix how everybody do when they do a remix. So I started doing dope mixes of old school songs, new school songs, and all that. And now I'm working on a new project soon that's coming out, a mixtape with original beats instead, you know, to try to get my sound out there. So before I was a rapper or MC, I was also a writer and also a person of literature. So all throughout high school, middle school, my whole academic career, I've always liked literature. Therefore, I like to relate that to my rhyming or, you know what I'm saying, me liking my craft of music. So one of my favorite books is The 48 Laws of Power. I've always wanted this book. I picked it up from Barnes & Noble, ended up reading it. Haven't got through all of it because this is one of the books you have to study. So all of the 48 Laws of Power in there, I like to apply to my own life and people in general because it pretty much teaches you how to handle people in situations. So I also apply that to my music and my personal life. And my second most powerful book that I like to read is Pimpology. Uh, this book is kind of controversial because of how people view it. But I like the philosophy behind it and sort of how the perspective and mindset that it gives you about handling people in situations as well. And then the third most powerful book, which is personal to me, would be my Red Rhyme book. 
So my red rhyme book is exactly what it what I said it is. It's my rhyme book. I have a majority of my rhymes in here, not all of them. This is a new rhyme book, but this is pretty much where I write all my rhymes down. I write rhymes physically and I also type it in my phone. I think both methods work well because sometimes you lose information in your phone. Therefore, it's also good to have pen and paper. And pen and paper also gives you a more authentic feeling, which is why I prefer it sometimes over typing in my phone. All right, some of my personal influences and albums that I bought. I got the Outcast, the Kumani. I personally like Andre 3000 because of his wordplay and how he stands out. All right, uh, definitely like Tupac. Everybody loves Tupac, but he reminds me of being a rebel, which kind of goes with against the grain that I mentioned before. You know what I'm saying? He was passionate about his craft and really outspoken about it, but he was also real, so I definitely like Tupac. Nas, definitely like him. Uh, his wordplay, how he was also educational as well. And then, uh, currently, Nipsey Hussle. I like his new project, Victory Lap. Uh, his entrepreneurial movements and how he, how he does things and his marketing strategies, stuff like that. And Aaliyah, I love all of her music. And I specifically like her because she was tomboyish and girly, which kind of reminds me of myself. She was able to kind of mix the two, and people still could understand her personality and things of that nature. So I definitely love her and her music. And then lastly, I love Eve because, you know, she represents not my hometown specifically, but represents where I come from. I have family in Philadelphia, but I'm from Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Lancaster, Lancaster, however you want to say it. So I definitely like Eve and... How she influenced the rap game and opened doors for female rappers and rappers in general. So like I said before, I'm from Lancaster, Pennsylvania, Lancaster, Lancaster, whatever you want to call it. That was definitely my spot of humble beginnings. So no matter how many brown paper bags I talk about, no matter how much polo I rap about or anything materialistic, I'm always going to be eating top ramen noodles and I'm always going to have my cranberry juice because I'm a humble person no matter what I talk about. A piece of advice I would give to people is to always be real and be true to yourself. Never conform or never like make somebody feel like you're less of yourself and never look for validation from anybody else. You know what I'm saying? You don't owe anybody explanation of anything you do and you don't have to talk to people. You don't, you know what I'm saying? You don't have to do anything you don't want to do. Always be true to yourself and always work hard and do what you got to do. Go against the grain. <laughs> The hat is not really in there. The main thing is in there. No, 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 no. Keep the hat on. My head forehead's too big. That's why you. Nah, it ain't that. Your head messed up. But it don't matter, huh? My hair is done. I don't have to straighten that shit up. No, the whole thing do there. Yeah, you ready. I'm practicing real quick. Shout out to the 1440 and Inner City Kids. My name is Anne Dope. I don't know what to say that. Nah. Care blooper. Oh, yeah, we recording now? <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Say it on the count of three, nigga. One, two, three. <laughs> I'm going to say it again. I'm the Anna Dope. I'm gonna do the things for a lot of these other way. I can't do it. I need to leave. How do you get your rap name? I said that. And then the next uh, project that I put out was. Um, I don't know what my next project is. Justice. You ready? You good? Don't be nervous, Kaya. Uh, you good? It's good. You going? Do what you gotta do. Go against the grain. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Never talk shit, just practice your preaching. I recommend a pastor with Nick and you thinking you know me. You niggas is phony. I'm still down to earth, but you niggas below me. I'm from the gutter, eat bread and baloney. I'm from up top, keep my Timberlands on me. Live the street life like a tenement on me. Their president, you can smell the sin on me. Walking around like I got the rent on me. Tending the face like my neighbor.